Can you introduce the second conure if your green cheek conure is already buddies and bonded and has his or her flock with smaller parrots, maybe like budgies or parrotlets? Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrotless Bond. This is my buddy, Binks. He's my golden conure or queen of Bavaria. And um, we're talking today about adding a second conure. Now, when Binks got a second golden conure, she did very well, they just went like this. Why? Well, for one thing, unfortunately, my rescue golden conure was not well, and Binks is young. He's still really young. Come here, sweetie. So that means that it's easier to introduce conures or any parrot. Babies are going to get along with other babies much more easily than adults or older parrots. Next, it's easy to introduce conures to each other when there are certain species, like a green cheek conure. There are some species of parrots, like Indian ringnecks, that are a little harder to introduce together. And then there are other species, like <laughs> green cheek conures, that tend to actually get along really well. Now, in order to get them to get along, and in order to introduce them, you do need to make sure to introduce them correctly. Even if your conure has been with other parrots, I do believe, and I, from my experience, that you could introduce them to another parrot. Binks was getting along with other parrots, and he took to a golden conure, and I've had the same experience with green cheese as well. The trick is to let them meet two ways. Number one, on a common ground. No cages around, a common ground like your living room or something like that, where their cages you know, don't reside, so that you can kind of see how they connect and how they do, how they get along. Next, you get their cages and you put their cages side by side. When a parrot is up next to the cage and as close to whoever's on the other side of the cage, then they're trying to go to that parrot or person. So when you approach a cage, whether it's a friend's parrot or if you're in a pet store or something like that, and you notice that the parrot is coming right up to the edge of the cage, they want to meet you or they want to meet that other parrot. On the other hand, when they go to the other side, the other end of the cage, they get as far away either from you or from the other parrot, they don't want to meet. They're social distancing, right? So at that point, you know that they're not going to get along as well or as easily, and you need to give them more time. That means you want to put some space between the cages. As time goes on, you can bring the cages closer and closer together. It took me like two or three months to introduce two green cheek conures. It just takes what it takes. It depends on the parrot, it depends on their personality, it depends on their age, and it probably depends on the direction of the wind. So then you bring their cages closer and closer together. Eventually, if you can have their cages side by side, one of the things that happens is you could see how they do. Like they might, through the cages, try to touch each other, and if they're not bickering, if they're touching, you know, you're going in the right direction. Generally speaking, if they're getting closer together, they're getting closer together. Next, again, keep introducing them in that common space. And if you see them start to come together and get along, you're going in the right direction. When I am ready to put two parrots together in a cage, I super duper supervise. I watch, I see how they're interacting, I see how they're doing for more than five minutes. I mean, like I set them up, I watch them for a few minutes, I go, I come back, I go, I come back, I go, I come back. Next. I make sure that the cage is spacious enough. I really like big cages. I feel like most of the cages that are made aren't really that big. It just is what it is. What are you gonna do? You get the biggest cage that you can for your money or your space, and that's all you can do. But within the cage, one of the other things that I always do is I always make sure there's a nice water bowl that the parents can get in to take a bath if they want. Food-wise, I make sure there's at least one dish of pellets, if not two. And then, depending on what other food, like a smaller bird, like a parrotlet, I'll make sure there's at least two different seed bowls. A green cheek conure, I'm not going to be giving them seeds, 
seeds are going to be something I give out, not, it's not a part of their general diet. So what are you doing? For something like a conure, I would make sure that there's a couple of dishes of pellets. And then this is a really good time to bring in some fresh vegetables. And I would make sure that either the plate or the bowl is big enough so that they can both get to it without like having to share a little space. I want a big space that they can get to, or I want two separate dishes. And sometimes the grass is always greener in the other bowl, and that might happen, but there's another cage for the other one to go to. Sorry, another cage, another dish. This might be a really good time to put out a millet sprig. And in that case, I'll put out two or I'll cut one sprig in half and put it on two separate sides of the cage. Maybe they'll both go to the same one and share. Maybe not. As I observed, this is a really good time to see, are they getting along? Are they gonna fight? Do I have one that is dominating or do I have two that are sharing? You know, what is the dynamic between the two of them? But I always make sure that no one's gonna go hungry. No one's going to be bullied or anything like that because there's other places to go to get food. So there's just no need to bully or eat clothes. <laughs> um, I hope I gives you some good ideas on like really setting up a successful environment so that your parrots have a, a step into having an easy transition into being together. I think it's really important for parrots to be together um, I always try to have at least two of a species. They are super social animals. It's going to increase their well-being to have more than one of them. And I really like having more than one in a cage. Um, one person on YouTube had written in response to one video, and she told me a story about how a friend of hers had gotten, had been given two lovebirds. So I don't know if we know the age. And these two lovebirds were great for a couple months, not too tame. And then a couple months in, one morning, one of them had killed the other. And so now she's uncomfortable putting parrots together in a cage. I could see why. That can really be difficult and traumatic. However, I don't feel like in my flock that's reason enough to keep my parrots separated. Because they really do benefit from being together. Fortunately, they don't go around nibbling on each other like they do who moms, right? Right, Bert? So what are some causes and what's going on there and why would I still put my parrots together? You never know what is going on. It's possible that the parrot was old. It's possible the other one was just putting it out of its misery. Parrots do have that ability to do that for each other. And for the flock's well-being. It's possible they were both one gender and kind of getting hormonal and having issues with that. Um, it doesn't seem likely, but it's possible. I mean, you just never know. It's possible there wasn't enough food in the cage and it was a survival thing. I don't know enough of the circumstances. I can't really guess, but I want you to have a sense that there's, there are so many possibilities and we just don't know. Even when we think we know, we might not really know why a parrot is, has passed away in the morning or been killed. You just don't know. Yes, there are some obvious reasons. Yes, it may very well be that they fought all of a sudden. But generally speaking, after having been in the cage together for a while, it's not very likely. On the other hand, since they were given to the friend as adults, their history isn't known. So we've got a big question mark as to what's really going on, you know, what's influencing them, what their age is. So I feel like when a parrot is together, one of the things that happens is together in a cage, they cuddle, they preen each other, um, they just do all sorts of things. They feed each other, they do things that they um, probably aren't gonna do with you. I don't think you're gonna wanna feed your parrot. I don't think you should, because then your parrot's gonna get hormonal with you. And it doesn't mean that they won't bond with you. My raindrop, my parrotlet, and Binks, they both live with other parrots. Binks is with an Amazon, which is not my first choice. But my Amazon took to Binks like a fish takes to water, so I've allowed it. And my parrotlet, Raindrop, lives with five other parrotlets, and she still always steps up and spends time with me because I spend time with her. If you spend time with your parrots, they'll still bond with you. And they have more of a flock. So 
I think it's really important that you introduce them well, safely, set up everything you can so that they have a nice, safe environment so that they feel like they have everything that they need. A clean cage, plenty of food, plenty of space, hopefully as much space as you can give them, and a happy home with a flock of either one other parrot or some humans as well because they can definitely consider us a part of the flock. Thanks for joining. If you have any questions about parrots, please be sure to comment below and I will catch you in my next blissful video in which hopefully my conure won't keep hiding behind me. Thanks. I'll see you next time.